by faith. This morning I have a word for you. It may not be with you long, but I'm going to give you what God gave me, and we're going to we gonna partake of His goodness. When God, when, I, when, when you're praying and asking God to lead and guide you and give you a word for your people, it may not come when you think it ought to. All right, all right. And it may not look like you think it ought to. The message this morning says it. Not what it looks like. You think about it. Not what it looks like. I remember when I was young and I attended church, there were people, older folks, who I thought were saved. And that's what I picture salvation look like. Yes. <laughs> being, I'm just gonna say it, being pruned faith, uh -huh. not being able to smile at anybody because you were serious about what God had got for you. But as I grew older, as I, 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 I was got saved, I found out that joy in the Lord. Yes. Yes. I never yes. would have found that out unless I got it for myself. Because so looking right. at those. All right. Come on, y'all know what I'm going to Looking at you never would have known that you could have joy in the Lord. That's right. Because everything, every good thing, every, every, every happy thought in church, or every time somebody smiled and took it. What's wrong with that? You got to be serious about it. You can be serious about the Lord. That's all right. And you can have joy. Yeah. 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 So salvation is not necessarily what you think and look at. The word this morning is going to start in Romans 5th chapter and we're going to go through the 5th, the 6th through the 11th verse. And the scripture is going to come from the Old Testament, which you're going to read. I mean, from the King James Version. I'm going to read, however, the New Living Translation. And you can read while I speak, and you'll get an understanding. Romans 5 and 6 through 11. When we were ugly, help us. Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though some might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have made, have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Amen. Yes. Friend of God. <clears throat> Not what it looks like. Right. You see, Satan, if you look at the world, you see everything that's going on, you think this world's going to hell and a handbag. But it's not that good. All the things that we've been through, y'all know what our family has been through, you know what the people in the church have been through in the last year, the last year and a half. We've had some struggles. But the Bible tells us that these struggles come to make us strong. 
So when you look at the struggle, you think, oh, they, they can't certainly can't believe in God. They can't certainly can't can believe in and trust in a God that will let all this happen. But it's not what it looks like. I picked this up on the way back in here. And this is one of the bags from my wife's family reunion. That's a bag that you give away. It's got a little verse on it and it says the Lord's the family reunion. Anybody want it? Jay, take them in. This bag isn't worth much. It's just a bag. You can have it. Say thank you. <laughs> if you look at that bag and you look at his JJ, pull up the bottom of that bag. I think there's something in that bag. You see anything in the bottom? Oh. <laughs> What's in there? Not what it looked like. That bag looked to everybody, including me. It looked like old bag. We found them anyway. I got my wife got whoo, lots of them just all the way everywhere. But God uses us. He allows us to not be what we look like. I look like a man who's been through a lot. That, that, that old thing that said, people said, I'm not what I look like. I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah. I don't look like what I've been through. That bag didn't look like what it was. It was a, a storage place for some money. And if you had passed that lane on this road, you'd just pass. You wouldn't have picked it up because it didn't mean anything to you unless you needed an old bag. But God uses us. Sometimes we encounter people who need a blessing. All right. All right. Sometimes we encounter people who need a word from God. That's right. Sometimes we encounter people who need to see God. Yes. Who need to see Christ. Yes. 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 We are not what we look like. It's not what it looks like. The situation is not what it looks like. All right. We pick up a Bible and we read it and Lord, unless we ask God to to open our understanding, unless we ask God to open the scriptures up to us, right. that we don't get the full understanding. I, I know people who read, who have read the Bible several times. Mm -hmm. They're agnostic. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in. Mm -hmm. But you can. They can quote scripture. All right. They know the Word of God, but to them, it's not what it looks like. That's right. To us. Every word in his truth. That's right. Or to us, uh, we should believe every word in his truth. We should live our life according to this roadmap, according to the instructions. But we think that things have changed. The world has changed, and now we've got people in high places saying that living any way you want to, believing any way you want to is all right. That God loves everybody. Out of all the instructions in this book, out of everything that they read, the only thing that they can maintain is God loves everybody. God loves you. No matter what I do, God loves you. And that's the only thing they retain. They didn't retain the part that said, this is what you got to do. These are the instructions you got to follow to make it to heaven. If you're a child of God, you are supposed to be an example of what yes. Jesus Christ is yes. down here. Right. You are supposed to be the living example of Christ down here. They didn't get that. Yeah. They think that because Christ said he loves man, that he does. Exactly, he does. They think that because God loves everybody, God is going to allow everybody in heaven. Hmm. You don't see that in the book. You don't see that. But times have changed. Things aren't like they used to be. Everybody's going to church. You find people living any kind of life in the pool, preaching, teaching. So things have changed. 
that old timey religion that mama and dad and granddad and that curved path y'all got over at church believe that ain't the way things are. They need to come up to the new standard. The more education people got, Brianna, the less they believe in the wood. So, education ain't a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. As a matter of fact, the more education you got, the better you are. But you got to believe on something. you got to put your faith and your belief in something. Just because a storm comes in your life does not mean it's the end of your life. That's right. That's right. Storms come to strengthen it. Sometimes we, <laughs> and I'm talking from personal experience, that we want to cool up in a little ball in this day. Yeah. That's going to get hard. People have passed. I've lost a loved one. And I just, I just don't want to go on. Lord, you can take me now. I, I read something the other day on Facebook that just stuck with me. That was a thought. And I'm talking, I'm talking about this. If you've been through anything, if you've had anything happen to you, and most of us have, whether well, it's traumatic right now, the loss of your mother, your father, your daughter, your whatever. We all going through something. Your husband. We've all gone through something. And, and the longer we go through it, the longer God sustains us, the, the less horrifying it is. But just think back to when we were going through really on the edge of the husband that, that just happened. Remember how traumatic it was? I lost my mom. I lost my dad. I lost my child. And it, I just, the, the quote from Facebook went something like this. I was on my last leg. I had thrown in the towel. And God threw it back and said, the test is about over. Wipe your face and get stuck. God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. He sent his son Christ to die for us. To let us know that he loved us enough that he wants us. He wants little pastor to join him in heaven after all down his finish. He wants me to be in heaven with him. He knew I couldn't make it by myself. But he knew that things are not what they look like. He knew that I couldn't make it. And people on the outside said, Pastor can't make it. Mm. Pastor been hit hard. He's had all these surgeries. He's had these losses in his life. He can't make it. That ain't what it looks like. That's what I mean. I've got a God that stood up for me. I've got a Christ that died for me. You know, when, when on the night that Christ was crucified, even his disciples, Spread out. They left. Things looked damn for. They didn't believe. Or they had a... Things were dark. Let's put it like that. He said, I'll be back in three days. You can tear down this temple, but in three days. But they went back to their life. Peter denied it. The others just, oh, we had Christ. Things look dark. But things are always what they look like. Christ was going back to prepare a place for us. We have to believe. See, faith cometh by hearing. And although when you're going through these trials, it's not easy. But you can continue to tell yourself. Repeat the word of faith. Amen. Amen. Repeat and give yourself the strength that you need. Amen. He said, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I can keep saying, Christ will never leave me nor forsake me. So, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter how hard the test is, yes. I heard somebody say, You know, when you're going through these tests and you can't hear from Christ, that's all it is a test. You never hear from the teacher while the test is going on. Right. 
The teacher don't give you an answer while the test is going on. It's afterward that the teacher comes back through and says, on number one, you should have prayed a little bit more. Mm -hmm. On number two, the answer was, you should have been more humble. Yeah. On number three, you should have asked for the mercy that he promised. You should have asked for the grace. We are children of the king. Yes. We are children of the risen Savior. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. Things may look dark down here. The storm may be... Uh, uh, tell me, what does joy look like? Hallelujah. What does faith look like? Amen. What does peace in your home look like? Amen. Well, I... You know, I went to a friend of mine's house and the whole time the children was over there yapping and I, I couldn't all hear myself think. Well, they may be at peace with that. Peace in your home may not look like peace in my home. Right. Right. You can't compare the peace in my house to the peace in your house. Amen. My peace, yeah. God's peace, yeah. may not look like what you think it ought to look like. Yeah. There's a, let me just go over here. Acts, second chapter, starting at the 36th verse. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, but let me read, I'll read that up there, and I'm going to read this from the New Translation. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words speared their hearts, and they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter replied that each of you, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, for then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and for those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Every one of us, God loves. But there is a condition to get to help. All right. Yes. All right. You know, everyone, my children, I love them. I love them. But there are conditions to be in my house. Amen. There are conditions. Amen. You, <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be the father. I know they're not correct English, but it's the way I want to make it. I be the father. So treat me like I am the father. That be the mother, treat her like she is the mother. If you can't follow those rules of the mother, then you got to get out of my house. Or you will be whipped with many stripes. The Lord said, these are the rules to get to heaven. You will repent of your sin. You will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the one and only Lord and Savior. You will acknowledge him dying on the cross. You will acknowledge him rising from the dead. And you acknowledge that he is the only way you can get there. Unless you follow those rules and follow the rules that he said that you got to live once you are saved. That doesn't mean you work in the church. To get saved. Ed Rohe, like that, you work in the church because you want saved. And I'm not talking about the church building. I'm talking about the church. There are things that you have to do because that things are not what they look like. It looks like that we cannot make it to heaven. There's no way that we can make it to heaven with all these rules God got us to follow. On our own, this is true. You cannot make it to hell. Because you can't stop sinning. But we have a Savior who yes. intervenes for us. Yes. Amen. When the storms come, or we think when we're young, 
that we just need wealth. We just need a lot of money. If I got a lot of money, I ain't got to sing it because I can buy all of them. No matter what it is, I can buy. I can buy peace. I can buy a little. But what does wealth look like? Well, according to our Bible, it's not in substance. That's right. That's right. Well, it's found in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What does faith look like? Faith looks like when storms are hitting your way. Speak to the storm. Yeah. Tell it to go in another direction. Right. Or in the midst of a storm, say peace. Be still. Not everything that we go through is meant to kill us. That's right. Not everything that we go through right. is meant to drive a wedge between us and our Lord and Savior. Right. Because God lets things happen, yes. we gain strength. Right. If we lean and depend on Him. Right. When you see a storm, Talk to God. All right. Ask God what is this storm meant to be? If it's meant to make me a better person, Lord, help me to go through this storm. Lord, if this storm is meant to do me harm, send it some other way. Point I want you to get from today's lesson. Christ is not what we think he ought to look like. Christ is a path. Christ is not a grave. Christ is either one of the deepest brethren back there. Christ is you. The only Christ that most of this world will ever see is you. Amen. You have to act like Christ. You have to forgive when you got a perfect right that you think that you don't have to forgive. You got a reason not to forgive. Yeah. You got a right to raise head. Come on now. Right. That's what we think. I got a right. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> God gives us yeah. everything that we need. We don't have to depend on the world. I don't have to have the world to forgive me. Because I got to see if you already did that. Amen. I don't have to have the world to give me peace. Because I got to see if you already did that. I don't have to count on the world for my joy. For my wealth. I don't have to count on the world for making me feel whole. I've got a Savior who did that hanging on the cross. And told me he loved me despite of me. Sometimes the big problem I have. But being saved is me. Amen. It ain't sister over there. Amen. It ain't deacon over there. It's me. Because yeah. I think I got a right to hate. I think I got a right to stir up from hell. I think I ought to be able. Because the world has done so much to me. But Christ is right there saying, look at what I'm offering you. Yes. yes. I'm offering you eternity in hell. Now you can stay down here and you can go on with your right to be mad, your right to hate, your right to stir up from hell. Or you can forgive. All right. <coughs> Church, I'm telling you that it's easy for the world to hate. It's easy for the church to hate. But what is he going to get 